Hi, Ian Roberts, and welcome to Mastering Composition and the Laboratory of the Painting Process. Last week, we looked at shadows and the role they play in still life in creating form. And this week, I wanted to do the same thing with landscape because shadows are helping us understand form there as well. And so I'm going to also show you my own process, since this is the, pro the laboratory of the painting process, uh, for a large painting, 36 by 60 inches. So I'm going to show you the photograph I work from, about a one minute demonstration of the roadmap of how I'm thinking, the structure I'm thinking of. Uh, then I'm just going to show you a sketch I did of it in advance. And then there's a 20 second time lapse photography of the whole thing getting blocked in and then you'll see the finished image. Uh, but before that, I just want to show you a couple of photographs of the landscape and the role that shadows are playing in it. So like last week, when we saw the sphere completely surrounded by light and it flattened it out, here's an example in a landscape of a tree, bush, that because the light is coming from behind us is completely flattened out. It just looks like a flat shape. There's no shadows except a little bit here and no cast shadows. If we come around, this is the same bush at the same time, if we come around from here to the side, we get a lit side, we get a dark side, we get a sense of the complexity of the bush because of all this interplay here, and we get the cast shadow. And then, of course, for some reason this is smaller, but anyway, I've walked around to the back of it, and again, it flattens out, but we have this beautiful halo of light. This is contre jour, against the day, uh, it's described in French, and we have the cast shadow coming towards us. But I wanted to show you another image just in terms of value masses. Now, I'm not crazy about the design of this. I wouldn't make a painting of it. But in terms of value masses, it's interesting because we could look at four value masses here. The sky being the lightest is number one. Even though it's gradated, it's all in one mass as one value. Where the sun is hitting is a second value. Where the sun is not hitting in this whole foreground area is a third value, and where the shadows are, like here, and all through the trees here, and over in here, that's a fourth value. Now what's important, just like in the reflections on the bowl last week, even though we might get some areas that are lighter in the shadow, we do not want them to get so light that they start competing with what's in the light, so that we really keep those four value masses distinct in order for us to understand what the light is doing. So here's the image that I wanted to do a painting of. It was from Provence, late evening light, coming low from the right-hand side. And there's really nice shapes in it, you know, big, simple shapes. Here's the road map that I drew for it, just in terms of what is the structure I'm looking at here. So before I begin, someone asked me what kind of pencils am I using, and most of the time I use a 2B Stadler Mars, and I sharpen it like that, and then just grind one edge so that I'm getting something that has, you know, not a point on it. So here's the image that I'm looking at this week. And I just want to make sure that I'm on the page there. And it's quite long. And if you look at the structure I'm thinking of here, or at least the photograph is giving me, I've got this line as an entrance. And we enter the painting here in the same way that if we were thinking to move into the landscape, we'd kind of be thinking from, well, where would our feet go? And so we just follow that in along the grasses. I'm going to probably have the strongest contrast right there on that um, olive tree against those darks. That'll just be one big dark shape. And so 
there'll be a pull back into the landscape because it's just back there. But that's going to be the structure that I'm looking at in this painting. Now, because I wanted to paint this large, 36 by 60 inches, I wanted just to do a sketch of it in advance. Just the simplest shapes to make sure that that road map would actually translate into good value masses when I block them in in the painting. And then with that planning in mind, I just started blocking it in. And here's a time lapse video of me doing that. It probably took me 35 or 40 minutes. I was just blocking most of it in with those cheap $2 uh, bristle brushes you get at the hard store, hardware store. Um, and you can see I'm just blocking it in shape by shape just like I was doing with the drawing. And then here's the finished image. I could block it in fast like that because I'd thought through the design and the major value masses and where they sat in space before I started painting. So from here on, I'll just be working on the edges and nuance and color so the whole thing gets richer and more engaging. And that takes time. I mean, it just sort of has its own life and you just keep working and you sort of pull it out. But as it happens, You've seen the process I've gone through, so I've got a good foundation to be building that on now. So I've got good value masses, a good design built on a good structure. And so now I feel confident that I can nuance and pull that thing forward and just make it better. So I hope you found today helpful. Um, I'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week and bye for now.